We're not doing the podcast right now, so in lieu of it existing for the moment, we're going to talk about the latest legacies of the DCAU issue that we put out on Christmas. We are. I'm James. That's I wrote it. Who we are? I you drew it. it. Most of it. And who did the cover? Uh, Rick, Rick Sellis. Rick Sellis. The cover. I was gonna say yeah. that's, that's where we should start. Is at the beginning. Before we go too far into this talk back, we should tell everyone legaciesdcau.com. Yeah. What to, is to this? Look at this. <laughs> you can look at it while we talk about it. You can yeah. follow along. We've done ten issues. It's monuments yeah, issues. <laughs> We're still very much in in my mind of what is Act One of mm-hmm. Legacies, which is just planting the seeds. Which even the 2019 issues are teasing things to come. Um, but th- this first page was actually, I think, one of our various attempts at issue number one or zero yes. or whatever we were going to start I was going to bring that up, too. Yeah. Starting out with Kronos was sort of a, a light bulb moment in my head where I was just like, that's perfect. It's very, like, BTAS. But this is very epic, like, grand yeah. scope sort of thing. I'm glad we got to go back and revisit the scene eventually. Despite the crowds that I <laughs> am so upset oh, yeah, you, you hated for these crowds. Grow, we have a Patreon page where you can be a part of the legacy yeah, issue. Which this a is couple the perfect of our patrons perfect are in the it. crowd, yeah. Like Stan Lee. And John Lennon. <laughs> the purple people. When I did like a live stream of me drawing the comic asking for random suggestions of people. Someone said Jimmy Neutron and I didn't hesitate. Okay, Maddie and Sissy are in the front row. Plus all the news nice. people. With J. Jonah Jameson's in there and uh, April from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> the bald guy that's right above Superman's head holding his phone up. I was kind of basing on the Michael Rosenbaum dude that shows up in Tabula Rasa. <laughs> And I drew this guy with a Captain Marvel symbol, and you were like, oh, cool to see aged up Billy Batson back there. I was like, yes, I did that on purpose. <laughs> but anyway, let's talk about the Justice League. Kind of disappointed we didn't get to really showcase this new version of the Justice League as much in this issue, because they were on the cover. We will, though. Yeah, I've already written the follow-up to this, so they get a lot of action in that issue. So if you're disappointed about that, don't worry, it's coming. Let's talk about the members. As abridged from the JLU we saw at the end of the, its final season and the one we saw in Batman Beyond. So having Barda as a main member there. Yeah, that was pretty, uh, like, an obvious one to include in Superman. Yeah, and then the Atom is there as sort of a um, nod to Micron, Kyle Rayner, and Cairo. And then it's uh, Static was in the Once and Future Thing episode as a much older man, but this is the Static costume that we saw from the Future Shock episode yeah. of Static Shock. It was cool to, to bring that costume back because that was the one and only time we ever saw him in that. And then Plastic Man and Starfire are there because they're two characters that we never saw in the DCAU, yeah. so I thought be fun to have them. They're nods to them. Plastic Man was referenced in that Jilly U episode because they're like, oh, we don't need two stretchy guys. And the, yeah, he's Eel O'Brien in the Batman Adventures yeah, comics. So. Yeah, so he's going to be around. It's and inevitable. I, and in Starfire, we saw in the Super Babes in uh, the Batman and Harley Quinn movie. It was someone dressed as Starfire, yeah. but still. We know yeah, she so exists we, somewhere. Yeah. The yeah. Kyle Rayner costume is straight out of 90s comics, but it's also straight out of Just Like vs. Fatal 5 because mm-hmm. I had designed a a Kyle Rayner outfit for this time period that was going to be inspired by this 90s look and, it, and yeah, he had like very a, similar but then when when they showed him looking like this in Fatal 5 we kind of like well we know he doesn't look like that during Justice League or Superman he wasn't a member of the Justice League in any of those times either so if he looked like this when he was in the Justice League let's just make him look like this here <laughs> so that exactly. we don't have to explain it later I mean that was cool I've always loved that costume yeah. when I started reading comics it was Kyle Rayner's Green Lantern right. in that costume 90s pre-Justice League stuff, coloring books, Jack in the Box, uh, and stuff yeah. like that. He looked like that, too. All four panels of page one rips from Divided We Fall, like the camera angle switches, because it's a very similar scene. All those reporters at the end of page one are, are cool. It's basically every reporter from the DCA. Yeah. You got Snapper Carr, Angela Chin, yeah. Lois Lane, Ron Soroya Drew, Bashir, Jack Ryder, parentheses the Creeper, and uh, Summer Gleason. All right, so page two. Castle Checkmate, this is what we saw in issue number four with Director Bones up there. Checkmate Falling, which is an event that um, is probably gonna happen in 09 as well. So it's been like 10 years of this rubble. Yeah. Wonder Woman's leaving Argus here to find something. We find out what that is in the follow-up part. We're seeing Sarge Steel and Argus that we met in Batman and Harley Quinn. It's hard to age up some of these characters only like 15 (laughs) years or so, because at some point I'm just putting gray temples on people. Right. (laughs) Going like, they're old now. Yeah. Except Wonder Woman. She doesn't age. Nope. Always 18. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. There's that bird over there in yeah. panel two from uh from a Robin Chuck specifically. Made. So next one we got John Stewart. He's hanging out here in Stag Industries, pining over Shayra. She's lost or dead, potentially, but definitely missing. I put that little feather, a callback to issue number zero, shards of things to come or things that have happened. We see one that has a little gray feather in it. I wanted the feather in there because it was a nod to Final Crisis. Right, because right. Because there's one panel where you see these feathers in the air. Grant Morrison yeah. went on record by saying that like, oh, that's when the Hawk people died. They kind of died off panel. But Jeff Johns brought him back for Blackest Night and then the first issue killed them off so you become Black Lantern. So they didn't even really die in Final Crisis. <laughs> if you're familiar with Jon Stewart from the comics, you might know that he headlined a book called Green Lantern Mosaic. Right. And he even is like wearing the mosaic uniform from that, yeah. essentially. So we are propping him up to become this new entity called the Mosaic. We'll learn more about him. John is also sitting in a chair that is a combination of Batman's big body cast chair from some of the recent Snyder Justice League mm -hmm. stuff and the Professor X, like, uh, this is like an action figure that you sent me yeah. a picture of. Without giving too much away, he is no longer an official Green Lantern, but he's still very imbued by Green Lantern power energy, harnessing that energy with the use of Stag Industries technology. If we do anything with legacies, it's setting up future legacies. That's right. <laughs> we got the Flash and impulse. Yep. A lot of this issue was me finally getting to draw the character designs that I designed in like 2012. <laughs> That's why we made it, man. Your actual design is up on the Legacies yes, the website. Yes, the extras page has, all yeah. of, has a lot of new all designs the after designs. this issue. Yeah. <laughs> in the dialogue, we know that Impulse is the grandson of Barry Allen from the comic books, but Barry never exists in the DCAU. Yep. There's like, I'm kind of trying to, to play at that sort of idea and suggest that Impulse, he doesn't quite exist normally <laughs> in this timeline yet. So I'm, I'm hoping to explain that in a little more detail in the yeah. future. And I also gave them both lightning, so they both have the speed force. Yeah. <laughs> Batman and Wayne Manor being all broody and old, and mm -hmm. I quit being Batman, and I'm sad now. Oracle is talking to him, and it is Barbara Gordon when she's referencing her dad. And then we're at Mars with uh, Jean Jones' area we saw in Secret Origins that J. Mm -hmm. Allen Carter accidentally opens up. Obviously, the door starts to open again. So as we'll see later in this issue, the um, Imperium and the Imperium <laughs> soldiers. Uh -huh, there you go, thank you. I did sneak the JTS Entertainment logo into one of the hieroglyphs on the second thing that uh, the gates <laughs> opening. Nice. One of my favorite things about working on Legacies is like you and Mark and Marcelo, you're all <laughs> really good at Easter sneaking in yeah. Easter eggs that I don't even know about. Next page is a, I guess it's a flashback to 2009. I wanted to tease this event because it's such a huge moment in the DCAU yeah. that we've never seen, but we always hear about and, and to kind of so confirm that about. we are going to do that in the comic yeah. because people are like oh please do 2009 and like yeah we we mm -hmm. that's kind of like 50 percent of the point of the comic right and this is that. definitely yeah. like for the readers who've been following us for a few years it's like look like here here's some red meat you know yeah. like yeah see the watchtowers destroyed and in panel two it's crashed somewhere in a desert checkmate knights are riding over there actually pawns they're pawns dark side told you once if you would not be his uh knight you would be his pawn True. <laughs> Panel three, we see some yeah. familiar characters. It's kind of hard to tell, but Dick has his eye patch. In the movie, there were three women who were Batwoman. Right. But who do you think, James? I think it's one of the three that, okay. we, that we saw in the movie. It would make sense to be uh, Kathy Duquesne, I think. Oh, really? That's not who I thought. What they're standing <laughs> on and by are the platforms from Future Shock. They're introduced in that episode as if they've been floating above Gotham City like the whole time, but we never saw them in Batman Beyond. Um, right. So they're explained in that episode to have been like military bases of some kind. In this, we're kind of showing them in their like heyday. They're like what they're actually used for or whatever. At the end of issue number four, we see blueprints right. for one of these platforms. And now we have the Triumvirate of Terror. <laughs> That's what I call them. Yep. The middle one's pretty obvious because we see him in the next panel. It's Ra's al Ghul in his golden helmet. That's straight up from a Kenner action figure. In, in the original Legacies, 
promo video, I put all three mm -hmm. of these guys in a very similar arrangement. People guessed correctly that it was Red Hood. People have been trying to guess who the other character is. The biggest guess has been Phantasm. It's not Phantasm, but the character has already appeared in Legacies. I remember like when this character did appear in Legacies, the dialogue that you wrote for that scene kind of gives it away if you're paying attention. <laughs> and I, I, I remember telling you like, I don't want to do this so early. And I guess it's been fine because no one's been figured fine. it out. No yeah. <laughs> for Red Hood, I will say it's not Jason Todd. This Red Hood is the one from the Batman Adventures. Which we saw for like two panels and then never again. Yeah. And then of course we've got the bat armor from Batman Beyond. Better than the yellow bat suit. The last few pages don't have a lot of new things to talk about, yeah. but we definitely I mean, we've got snap a car regard. snapping yeah. and Lois is like, oh, oh snap. You, Superman wasn't around for the near apocalypse mm -hmm. of 09. He was off universe. Where exactly? We'll find out. Basically our way of being like, why wouldn't Superman just stop everything? <laughs> but he's too powerful. The story will be more interesting yeah. if he's not there. <laughs> also a great story for why he's gone. I yeah. Think, so JLU symbol I put on the podium is straight off of a coffee mug from The Call. <laughs> Statics dialogue there. Yep being half amazing straight out of his theme song. Also, I made the mistake of Snapper is like pointing his left hand at Superman. The very next panel, he's pointing his right hand at Superman. So it's like between panels, he just like, you did this yeah. and you did this and you're getting a yep. car and you're- um, He looks super stoned in this next panel. <laughs> because he's <laughs> got the, the alien juices vaping through his blood. Yep. <laughs> he's, he's about to turn into an Imperium, isn't he? No, he's not. So now we know, like, uh, there's sort of a secret invasion type thing going on. More will be explained in the follow-up issue, but it, it's like, they look like white blood cells, kind of. Right. They're very... Squishy and white. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just like me. But I don't think, personally, that he's been impersonating Snapper Carr ever no. since the end of the episode. I had never drawn these aliens prior to this issue, so I was constantly referencing, like, are his blobs in the right place? <laughs> it was like when we did all the parademons in issue mm. three or whatever. I had to draw so you many draw parademons. And yeah, now I'm like, I can just draw this alien without <laughs> looking at anything. Like, there's too, so many nice. times that I had to do you it. might be the only one on Earth. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I'm really happy with the effects on the next panel with Superman heat visioning. This panel sort of was inspired by the Trinity War. Oh, Superman just heat visioning a guy. It's weird drawing panels like this knowing that I'm going to put in effects later because I just draw Superman standing there going, huh, with nothing coming out of his eyes. <laughs> when it came to this, final page I was like oh my god like I can't do this and it is kind of a cheat as I was like halfway through drawing the head shapes I went back and found that Gotham Adventures issue I think Tim Levins yeah. just did the exact same thing and I was like okay yeah. if Tim Levins can do it for an official DCAU comic I can do it for Legacy and it also helps emphasize like Pariah over there in the, in the edge like he's, you might not he's see like him otherwise he's like five people big don't look at it too long <laughs> crotch is the same level as everyone else's crotch mm -hmm. so you can yeah I was the whole time I was like, really? We're having a crotch panel now? <laughs> Don't look at it too long. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this is Pariah from Crisis on Infinite Earths, which you can say mm -hmm. more about than me, I'm sure. Because he watched the beginning of the universe, he was sort of doomed to now watch the Anti-Monitor end every universe. And we're kind of going with that a little bit, but Dark King, it's not the Anti-Monitor, I will say that. Mm -hmm. Sort of meshing different ideas together here to tell an original story inspired by Crisis. Crisis. We'll learn actually in this follow-up issue, um, we'll, we'll reveal who this king is yeah. on, on the ship and everything. You made me redo his character design a couple times because I made him look too angry. He basically had to oh, yeah. constantly look Oh no! And we get this final panel. It goes back to issue number one. Even though this takes place about 30 years before the breach we saw in issue number right. one, <laughs> that will be explained. This ship is based off a design from the comics. The carrier from the Authority. Which has also shown up in metal. Capable of traveling through the multiverse. It's basically kind of a simplified Tim style-ish looking thing. It's kind of a combination of ideas, various other alien ships that we've seen just design elements from from that, but it's, it's to continue that hinting at 
crisis related stuff yeah. well yeah that, that's, so that's the it. issue <laughs> that's a lot for six pages yeah we really pack it in <laughs> regular comics are about 20 pages we'd love to make them that long but these yeah. even these six pages take us a long time to do on no budget labor of love it's really cool that people actually give a shit about this comic by the fans for the fans we're just doing it because we can and we want to and we enjoy it <laughs> yeah if you like legacies uh, you should google our names and find other things that we yeah. do <laughs> well thank you for listening <laughs> and uh, i'm sure we'll be back to do this either like this or on the podcast for the next issue and future issues legacies dcau.com go read all 10 current issues should we say the title of the follow-up issue you can say it because i don't remember it's called mageddon <laughs> well but that's not from... the very next one to come out is it it might not be the next one to come out, <laughs> but it's, it's the one that'll pick up from this final panel i'm probably about like seven or eight scripts like ahead of all the art there's a yeah. lot of writing that's finished not a matter of waiting for the scripts is it james uh <clears throat>